you don't understand, this teddy bear just ripped and now my life is over. Good morning, y'all. Y buenos dias. So I'm really excited for today's video. We will be talking about tantrums. So this is going to be the first part in a three-part series on tantrums. And we're going to discuss today how to avoid tantrums. The next segment will be how to deal with tantrums as they're happening. And the last segment will be what not to do during tantrums. So if you guys are interested, then keep on watching. Okay, so before we even get started, I'm going to just kind of introduce myself uh, when it comes to tantrums. So I have a two and a half year old named Luna and a one and a half month old named Kali. So obviously these tantrum talks is coming from my experience with Luna. So we are actually pretty fortunate that she is a very mild mannered person in general. She's just kind of go with the flow. So we don't really uh, deal with any very constant or extreme extreme tantrums, but I think that it has a lot to do with what I'm about to mention in a little bit on how to avoid tantrums in general. So yeah, so that's just a little bit of background as to uh, how I know about tantrums. Okay, so first things first when trying to avoid tantrums is be the example. So this pretty much goes with every single thing dealing with parenting ever. Um, our kids will want to mirror who we are and so if we are the example of something happened it upset me I'm gonna deal with it in a proper way not saying that a hundred percent of the time they're gonna be like oh mom does this so I'm gonna do it that way dad does this so I'm gonna do it that way but they're gonna have like a point of reference right a correct point of reference of what um, is deemed normal of what is deemed responsible of what is deemed correct in whatever your way of handling something is. But if something upsets you and the first thing you wanna do is start throwing stuff across the room or start yelling and start kicking stuff, then they're also gonna mirror that behavior. And so by modeling, modeling how you want them to be is pretty much the most important factor when it comes to raising children in general, but a lot when it comes to avoiding tantrums. My next tip is to evaluate your expectations. Um, a lot of us tend to hold our children to these completely unrealistic standards when it comes to them handling their emotions, especially when it comes to them being younger. Um, you gotta just check yourself. Like if a three-year-old is really upset because their crayon broke, that's because they're really upset that their crayon broke. Like you can't think about them from the perspective of a 30 year old. Like no, to them that crayon was really important and they've known it for like, you know, half of their life. And so it's a big deal to them. So evaluate your expectations. Don't hold your kids to these unrealistic standards of how they're supposed to act um, because they're children and they are going to overreact because they are learning how to deal with these emotions. They are literally learning what it means to feel certain ways. And that kind of takes me to the next point, which is to research and learn about child development. Re read and learn about how their brains are developing at different points and you'll really understand why it is that they're dealing with certain situations and why for some reasons it's like really intense and then some reasons it's really not. And that's just because the way that they're growing, they're literally learning logic. Like small children don't understand the concept of logic. Like it doesn't make sense in their brain. Therefore, when you're just trying to explain something logically, they're like, you don't understand this teddy bear just ripped and now my life is over like to them it really is that serious and so for us to understand that for us to be like okay the reason why they're acting like that is because they don't get x y and z okay so now you're in a better mindset you're in a better frame of mind to be able to handle that situation if you know where and what point your child is developing and also realize that your child is different which brings me to my next point stop comparing your kids to other kids it's toxic for the other child it's toxic for your child and it's bad for you and the other parent like 
all all the way around not good to compare your children because you don't want to be compared like you don't want somebody to be comparing you to another parent like it's weird it's bad it's not constructive there's so many better ways of handling things than by just comparing to another person by saying like oh hulano knows not to have a fit over this why don't you like that's just not not a good way of handling or so and so doesn't cry when they need to get a bath why can't you like that's just not a good way imagine how that would feel if someone would tell you like you just got broken up with somebody and someone would be like elena just got broken up and she didn't cry you need to get over yourself like that's only gonna make you cry more so just just don't don't compare your children to any other kids even with your own kids and that's something that i have to learn as quali and luna get older is i can't compare luna to quali i can't compare quali to luna like i need i need to not do that because they're they're individual people and we must treat them as such they are people which takes me to my next point as individual people they need to learn about feelings um this comes like at a strange way to a lot of people because we were never taught about feelings and so we can't continue going on and thinking that the way that we were raised was the end all be all we oftentimes hear well i was raised like this and i turned out fine and half the time you're just looking at the person like really are you really fine though uh you really don't think you have any issues going on but anyways and so by teaching our kids about feelings from a very young age they are able to understand um what it is that they're going through so i know that all of y'all have experienced this because i know i have like all of the time it's like you come home from work and you're just like feeling weird and like you don't even know like are you sad are you mad like you don't even know like are you angry what what is it that you're feeling so you're just like in this weird blob of emotions and it makes you feel worse because you don't really know what's going on that's how kids feel because they literally can't put their emotions into words they can't they can't find the language to classify how it is that they're feeling and so with luna um from a very young age i made these little flashcards for her and it's got like the emotion face on one side and then the name of the emotion on the back and so we've made a bunch of different kinds of games out of this um we either flashed the card and said like luna como se siente and she would have to say like está triste or está feliz or you know whatever or i would i would tell her the name of the emotion and she would have to replicate it and so just by simple things like that it doesn't have to be overly complicated just simple things like that they're able to put language to what it is that they're feeling so if she's really upset about something i'll ask her luna como se siente how is it that you feel and she'll say luna está triste luna sad and then now we are able to have that conversation as opposed to if she didn't know how she felt she just felt bad you know she just feels off and so by having that language we're able to literally communicate and go forth and move forward from whatever it is that's going on so another way to avoid tantrums altogether is by checking out those cues and checking and avoiding triggers for your children so one of the cues is hunger make sure your kid has eaten if not they're going to be upset they're going to be cranky if they haven't had a snack in a while they're going to be cranky if they missed their meal if they didn't eat breakfast you are the same way i get so mad if i eat breakfast too late because i'm just like upset i'm like i'm hangry now and there's nothing anybody can say that'll make me feel better. So make sure that they've eaten, make sure that they're not thirsty. Water is so important. I say this in every single one of my videos, but it it just works for every single one of my videos. Make sure they drink enough water, make sure they're hydrated because that affects their well-being. Another one is sleep. This is such an important one and people kind of forget about it. Um again, it goes for anybody regardless of whether you're a toddler or you're 50. Sleep is so important. and it will affect your entire day and it's the same thing with kids even more so because they need more sleep and they more they need more in depth like deep sleep and so if they're not on a consistent schedule if they're not on something that's semi predictable they'll get off balance and they won't sleep as well and so and that's why i strongly suggest having a somewhat structured schedule for their day-to-day -day basis just so that they know pretty much what event is coming next. And so with that, it grants them better sleep. So having so and I know that that's not the easiest thing in the world, especially when you got multiple kids, but 
having some kind of structure, some kind of loose base uh, list of what's gonna happen, they're able to sleep better, they're able to predict what is going on with their day. And so sleep is critical and they will just be in such a better mood, just like you are when you have a great night's sleep. So that is it for my list of how to avoid tantrums. Make sure you stay tuned for the next video, which will be on how to deal with tantrums while they're happening. If you guys have any comments or questions, shoot them over at my Instagram and I will answer them there. Lots of for watching and I will talk to y'all later.